Let's, let's welcome everybody. Hey everybody, we've been talking about this idea of continental drift, we've been talking about the mechanism to make the continents drift, and that leads us to this guy. It's a nice map back there. It is a nice map. It's a map of the world, and it's called a bathymetric map because you can actually see beneath the surface. And when you kind of look on a map like this, or if you just even pull up Google Earth, if you play around with it enough, you'll be able to see these exact features all over our planet. And that kind of let geologists and scientists know that all these features that we're going to talk about in this section came from this idea of what we call plate, plate tectonics. tectonics. So what is plate tectonics? Well, plate tectonics is basically the idea that plates that make up the Earth's crust are moving around on top of a transition between the mantle and the crust. And as they move, there are different types of interactions. We have the different plates that come around from geologists mapping out each of these different movements. So there's North American plate, there's a big Pacific plate, a South American plate, Europe and Asia are kind of on one large plate together. And they meet, like you said, in three boundaries. In three different ways. Convergent boundaries, divergent boundaries, and transform boundaries. And there's an easy way to remember each of them. When we're talking convergence, we've got two plates that are coming together. They're colliding. So C for convergence, C for colliding. And it can happen pretty much for every single type of crust you could have. A continental plate or an ocean plate, those can all meet and one plate usually dies under the other one. Why does that happen? Well with continental plates you have a less dense crust. With less dense crust it leads you to have uh, more buoyancy. So it kind of floats on top of the more de dense crust which is the ocean crust. So the ocean crust dives underneath creating something called a trench or a subduction zone. So when one gets pushed down under the other the more dense material sinks. You can see that the magma is formed by that crust, that solid rock heating up and liquefying and you can get things like mountain ranges or volcanoes to I form. Mean, yeah, since heat rises, as it rises to the top, it carries all that magma up with it and creates a lot of different kinds of features. A lot of volcanoes actually at this particular kind of boundary. But if they're not an ocean plate and an ocean plate or an ocean and a continent plate, you could have really just two continents running into each other that have the same density. And what happens there? Well, then you just end up with a mountain chain. The Himalaya Mountains are a really good example where India, which is continental crust and China, which is continental crust, are coming together and just basically creating a mountain. Nowhere to go but up. So the other type of boundary is a divergent boundary. And in divergent boundaries, we're gonna have two plates moving away from each other, dividing, and that's the way I kind of remember it, D for divide and C for collide. That works for me. We see this a lot at places known as mid-ocean ridges. If you look back on the map, you can see these giant scars going down the ocean and that's where places where you see two plates kind of pulling apart. Specifically the one we study a lot is this uh, the mid-Atlantic ridge which separates South America from Africa which is what earlier scientists saw specifically Alfred Wegener to give us some clues as to that, that this was happening at all. And it can even happen in between two continental plates when you have magma forcing its way up pushing the two slabs apart you create this rift in this valley that forms as the two plates are kind of pushed out from the middle. And as a result, you end up with brand new crust forming in the center of the rift. And the further you get away from the center of the rift, the older and the older crust gets. And that older crust has to go somewhere because the earth isn't getting bigger. And that disappears at the convergent zones as ocean crust diving underneath continental crust. So it's a big recycling process. It is. And one of my favorite proofs that this is actually happening are these videos that we get from sending robots down to the bottom of the ocean. So as we explore the bottom of the ocean, we see at these mid-Atlantic ridges, we see the magma forcing its way through cracks in the earth, and it's a very slow process, but that is creating more and more rock, and that more and more rock has to go somewhere, so it pushes those two pieces apart. And one poor place that this is actually happening is right here along the mid-Atlantic ridge on the island of Iceland which is growing at about the rate of four centimeters a year, give or take. So that means if you lived on the east side or the west side, you're on two different plates, 
and you're actually going to be pulled apart, and eventually there'll be two separate islands far in the future. The third kind of boundary is basically the kind that slide past one another. They're called transform boundaries. I don't know if there's a really easy way to remember this, except that when the transformers form, they, all kinds of stuff is sliding past one another, so that helps me to remember. Or that there's two plates that slide past each other. T for two plates. And another name for a transform boundary is called a strike-slip fault. A really famous transform boundary is the San Andreas Fault, where a lot of people think that California is going to fall off into the ocean somehow. But what's really happening is as the Pacific Plate and the North American Plate slide past each other, they are just very simply moving like eventually California will become its own little island off in the Pacific Ocean. Specifically Los Angeles. Yeah. Not all of California. Not all of it, right. Okay. Convergence, we saw volcanoes, we saw mountains, and at divergence, we saw volcanic activity, we saw sort of mountains also being formed there. What are you seeing on a transform boundary? Well, one thing that I know is that in the other two boundaries, you have new crust being formed or you have old crust being destroyed. That's not happening here. Basically, you end up with what amounts to a really long crack with some very short ridges along the sides of it. And since rocks aren't smooth and you have these rough, rigid pieces sliding past each other, they may not slide as easily as we're seeing here. No, they don't. Matter of fact, there's a lot of grabbing and pulling and eventually breaking, so they move and if it, not in a smooth way. And if the rock breaks, I bet you the earth shakes. It's a lot of energy building up. So we'll see earthquakes at these locations. Yeah. The main things we want to get out of this, convergence or colliding plates, and know the features that you get there. Divergence, those are dividing plates, pushing apart. And, and know what, what features you get there. And why they move apart. Mm -hmm. And a transform, nothing's getting created, nothing's getting destroyed. You're just getting two plates to kind of slide past each other. Again, not too much of a feature there, but more of an effect in your earthquake. So with all those features, we're gonna talk about with mountains, volcanoes, and earthquakes. We'll get more in depth with those in the future. For now, know that there are tectonic plates and know how each of them interact. Convergence, divergence, divergence transform. See you later.